What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. Everybody loves a good starter Pokémon, and oftentimes they're some of the coolest ones in a given region and make us connect with it immediately. Most people will have a starter or two in their top ten. But I think we've all come to realize at this point that there's something off about them. You can never really find starter Pokémon in the wild. Almost never will you be able to find starter Pokémon in the regions they supposedly represent. This makes them even more rare than the legendary Pokémon, since you can at least catch one of them in the wild. Pikachu, while being considered a starter Pokémon, is found in most all of the other regions out there, which has me wondering about the legitimacy of its starting position at all. And I guess that you can find Eevee out there sometimes, too. But pretty much all of these fire, water, grass staples are locked behind a one-off choice. Even fossil Pokémon can be found easier than these elusive perfect partners, and they're all dead. So what's the deal? Are these Pokémon genetically created from scratch in some kind of lab, and then shipped off to all the professors to hand them out to children? Well, if Type Null is any indication, then that technology is still quite a ways off. So where do these Pokémon come from? To my knowledge, one of the few times that you could find wild starter Pokémon is with the island scan byproduct of the QR code function in the Gen 7 games. However, all of those Pokémon are specifically mentioned as not being from the Alola region, further supported by the fact that none of them were in the decks. And yet again, the Alolan starters themselves were not found anywhere in the wild. So maybe the Aether Foundation just had a containment leak at their conservatory or something. Another questionable method would be from Dynamax Battles in Gen 8, where you can find the Kanto starters, but I don't really see those as wild battles necessarily. Those feel more like weird pocket dimensions where the laws of nature no longer apply. And it's not like you can find them out on a route somewhere, they're only given in gifts like we've come to expect. Clearly, the Friend Safari is not a natural phenomenon either, so the only actual argument you could make, in my eyes, is with the Kanto starters in the Let's Go games, where you can actually find them out in the grass milling about with all of the others. But even then, it's only when working for it. You won't likely just stumble upon one, since it requires a high catching streak. This mechanics-based method of finding them alone makes me think it probably shouldn't be considered canon, but even then, we've still seen Kanto without them more often, only being obtained by the generosity of others. And even if you did find one out in the wild, who's to say it wasn't from somebody else releasing it from their PC because it didn't have the right ability or wasn't a shiny? There's just no way to tell for sure. However, despite all the mystery surrounding these cute and cuddly creatures that grow into battling machines, I think we may have finally gotten a glimpse at where the starters come from. See, the trailers for the new Pokémon Snap have shown us the beauty of the Lentil region. First of all, if you thought they named this place after a side dish, you're not alone. However, it has nothing to do with beans. As you can clearly see from the map, it isn't even shaped like one. Because in the spelling that they use, the definition of the word Lentil means of or pertaining to a lens so it actually makes perfect sense to use in this camera-based adventure. Still not sure why he's called Professor Mirror, though. Anyway, your purpose in working for Professor Mirror is to document Pokémon in the wild to see how they are undisturbed by human interference. And not to worry, I'm sure your giant hover pod thing is completely safe. Probably. However, it is specifically stated that these Pokémon are in their natural habitats, so it seems likely that these Pokémon are all native to the Lentil region. And as we can see, there is Pikachu, which is no surprise really, but there's also Pichu, which is more impressive since babies are hard to come by in the wild. And even Alolan Raichu. I would say that's impossible, but then again, the Lentil region is also an archipelago and seems to have pretty much any environment a Pokémon might need to survive. So it seems like an ideal paradise for all Pokémon to coexist, or the ideal place to find some rare three-stage Pokémon good for first-time trainers? We've already seen a Squirtle, and separately, a fully evolved Blastoise, so we can assume that they would be aware of the benefits that their final forms could be to trainers, as they can witness them all in the wild. On top of that, we've also seen Torchic, Torterra, and Primarina, as well as seeing Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble. And that's just so far! I'm sure there will be even more once we can scope out the entire region. 
we also caught a glimpse of a massive meganium under the influence of the Illumina phenomenon? This is said to be a point of study for Professor Mirror, and while it is not exclusive to starter Pokémon, doesn't it make sense for there to be something special to set apart the region that would be the home of the starters? Maybe it's what drew people to discover them in the first place, and then they just happened to notice how perfectly balanced the battling ecosystem was on this island and thought, wow, we should use these to fight in all of our gyms. Or maybe there was some kind of big cultural event that started here and led these Pokémon to being so revered. Now I suppose you could argue that the islands of the Lentil region are some sort of preserve and that these rare Pokémon were taken to a sanctuary for their own protection, kind of like the Safari Zone. But that doesn't seem to be the case with the wording that they've used thus far. It appears that these Pokémon live in these places naturally. Plus it doesn't really make sense that these would be carefully cultivated picks when the likes of Bidoof and other common ones are also sniffing around. Now, what I don't know is how they would be able to determine which starters go to which region. Did they just call dibs on the ones they think are coolest? Who's to say, since they presumably could have drafted just about any of them that they wanted? Maybe the professors come in with a specific list of criteria that they're looking for. Regardless, the simple fact of the matter is that the Lentil region is just about the only place that we've ever seen these rare Pokémon in the wild, and very well could be their home. Although, I gotta say, I'm pretty excited for the new Pokémon Snap in general, despite only playing the original one for probably less than two hours in my life. I never had the muscle memory of every course down pat, but something about the new one's wholesome vibe and breathtaking beauty has me hotly anticipating its imminent release, and I have no doubt that we'll find some more starters along the way. We will of course see once we're actually able to explore this island paradise, and hopefully our little nature documentary will turn up even more evidence to prove that this is the place that the starter Pokémon live, or at least one of the more prominent ones. As far as I'm concerned, the Lindel region is renowned worldwide and has professors coming from all over to get these one-of-a-kind Pokémon. And who knows, maybe if we look hard enough in this new Pokémon Snap, we might get a sneak peek of something to come. What do you think of the starter's potential home? Which ones would you like to see most? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!